Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Jessica and today I have my deck of cards ready because it is deck of panning day. I'm so excited to film this update. I have a lot of great rollouts happening this month and I am excited to see what new things are going to come in. Only three more updates left for this project this year so I'll have an update for you in October, November and then wrapping it all up in December and I'm just excited to see what else I can play with in my collection during the course of this year. For those of you who don't know, this project was created by Emily from Emily and Max here on YouTube, who does a lot of different painting content and book content, and she's just really sweet, and we love her for inventing this project because it's so much fun, and she was inspired by another YouTuber, Books with Maddie, who used this deck of cards style generation of prompts to help her with her TBR book list, and we use it for makeup panning. And I just love this project because it makes panning into a game and helps me to rifle through my collection. There's butter rubbing against my tripod. Come here. People want you. Hi. Okay, okay. But yeah, it helps me to rifle through my collection and get use on things that have been neglected due to, you know, all my other painting projects that I'm doing. I'm trying to show butter to the camera, but he is not interested in it at all. Butter, show the people. Yeah, dear. He doesn't like the bright lights. Yeah, I think that's why he shies away. But we love him for it anyways, and now he's gonna get fur all over me. Oh, I also wanted to have a quick message that um, due to my comments, I decided not to light my candle this video. And I just like to light the candle because it smells nice and it's kind of adds a little light and something to add a field of interest in the background. And I don't know, other people do it. I don't know why people like candles because they enjoy them. And this is actually a special candle that is from my good friend's company. It's called Lucky Number Candles. And this is number 13. And... It is a wood wick candle and you can see the candle is very, sh the wick is very short. I do keep it short, um, but wood wick candles just have that loud crackle noise and that flickering flame. And sometimes they put off a little bit of smoke and that's all by design. Like that's part of the appeal of wood wick candles if you haven't burned them before. And also um, a lot of people were concerned with how close my camera, my candle was to my wall. And I really appreciate your concern. I really think it's really nice for you to, you know, be watching out for me like that. So thank you. But in videos, things can sometimes look a little bit different than they do in real life or like a little bit exaggerated because, you know, the perspective's off. So it looks like this is really close to my wall, but actually it's a good like foot away. Like now it's touching my wall and it's right here at the front or like mid front of my vanity. So it's very far away from my wall and no paint or artificial plants or anything were harmed in the filming of these videos. Let's get right on to deck of fanning. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put you down. Goodbye. He's very happy that I am holding him covered in fur now. And drool, he also drooled on me. He does that when he's very happy. Isn't that adorable? Starting with the item that's been in this project the longest, I have this lip color from Revlon. This is their Ultra HD Matte Lip Color, and this is the shade Addiction. So I brought this into the project in May when I rolled the card Queen of Hearts, which is an in it for the long haul prompt. And I knew that I wanted to get a lot of use on this lip color before the end of the year because that was one of my goals for my plan to pan in 2023 and something that I wanted to use up or at least get a lot of use on because I do plan to declutter it at the end of the year just because of the length of time that it's been in my collection and it's it's kind of a high maintenance shade to wear on a daily basis. I love this formula, but I really do prefer it in nude. So my goal for this item was to use it 30 times by the December update. So as of last month, I had used it 15 times. My goal is to reach for it four times in the next month. I only reached for it three, so I now have a total of 18 uses and I have 12 more uses to go on this one, but I'm not too worried about that if I do four uses each month before December, then I'll be good. And I don't think that'll be hard for me to do, especially now that we are finally, finally getting into the fall and I'll be loving reaching for berry tones like this. It's not the easiest shade for work, but it also does mix really well with other lip colors to kind of tone it down a little bit and uh, make it just a little bit more wearable for day to day. So that one of course is staying in and being a long haul item that is quite fitting. This next item, I swear it's been in for two months, but according to my little booklet here, I just rolled it in last month when I drew the card for Already Has Pan, and that is this powder from LYS. This is their Triple Fix Translucent Setting Powder, and I have the shade Resilience, which is basically their completely translucent shade. I have had two months of use on this one, so I brought this into the project in July. Here's what it was looking like. 
Didn't have a lot of product left over and I knew it'd be pretty easy for me to finish this up in this project. Here's what it was looking like last month after 23 uses. So close to being finished. In the past month, I reached for it an additional 12 times making for 35 uses total and here's what it's looking like today. This thing was kind of a pain in the butt to pan because you really had to get into those corners. That's where all the leftover product was at the end and it was not easy to get a powder brush in there. So I ended up kind of just flaking away at it, scraping away and pulverizing as I go and as needed. And that was how I was able to empty out all those awkward corners. And I'm happy I got there. This actually went pretty fast, this product. I used it from start to finish basically as soon as I purchased it. That's how my powder collection has been looking and I've been loving that. This was a good powder. It wasn't a great powder. It's a great price. It's only like $20 or less, maybe 18. So definitely a good value for like a decent powder, but you know, it wasn't a ton of product in there. Let's see, it says that there are 6.5 grams of powder. I don't know how much that is compared to other powders, but it went pretty fast for me. I think maybe four or five months of use. I guess that's pretty long, longer than I thought. I, I think I have to look into it. I have to look exactly like when I purchased this. Um, let me see. I might even have it in my workbook right here. I'm a pen and paper gal. I'm very old fashioned in that way. I think I did buy this last year, but I didn't break into it until at some point, like probably a couple months into this year. So it probably lasted me four months, maybe five. And I was using a couple other powders here and there, but it's all besides the point. It's empty now. And that means I get to bring a new item into this project, so. It's all we care about. <laughs> Next is from NYX. This is the Bear With Me Concealer, the like serum type concealer. And this has been in my project for two months as well. I brought this into my project when I drew the Nine of Hearts, which was for concealer. So that was very specific and made it easy for me to grab one for my collection to work on. So here's what it was looking like when I first brought it in. My goal was to get up to that line between With Me and Concealer on the bottle. So here's what it was looking like last month after 25 uses. And I really powered through with this concealer. I've used it every single day until I reached my goal. I reached for it 23 more times, making for 48 uses total. And here's what it's looking like today. And you can see it's exactly at that line. I even went like a smidgen above, like on like the high side of the line, if we're looking at the entire width of the line. And I was satisfied with that. As soon as I reached that goal, I put it back into my drawer because to be honest, this is really not my favorite concealer. It's a good one, but it's just not like my style of concealer. I don't love the super liquidy, wet concealers. I feel like sometimes they can move around a little bit more for me or just are more difficult for me to set. Like I really have to set them well with a powder and then I get that more powdery crepey look. So I really prefer kind of a thicker, more full coverage concealer just so I can use less of it and there's just less product overall, you know, without the powder. Because if I'm putting this, I really have to use a generous amount of powder. Otherwise it's gonna be all over my face. That is just what's realistic for me in my day and my skin at this age. So I do prefer a more thicker full coverage concealer typically. I've been loving this one from e.l.f., the Hydrating Camo Concealer. It's also a much better shade match for me. I got this in too light of a shade. So I really kind of had to grin and bear it while I went through this project, but I'm happy I got the use on it. I'm happy that I now have a more well-informed opinion of this product. And I'm also happy to roll this in maybe in the winter when my skin is a little more dry and a little more pale, and this will work just that much more well for me. So that one is rolling out. Second rollout this month, let's keep going. This next product I brought in last month when I drew the Three of Clubs, which was a baked product. So I immediately reached for something from Hourglass. This is the Hourglass Blush Palette. And this has always been one of my favorite items in my entire collection. I've loved it for years. I got it from my husband for Christmas. It was one of the first high-end items like this that I owned and I've loved it ever since. And this one did have that tragedy. I brought her to Vegas and I dropped her while I was getting ready and the blushes smashed but there was one blush preserved in here and there was leftover blush on the pan from those other two blushes that had broken all that to say my goal for this was to use it just 20 times and then put it right back into my collection here's what this palette was looking like last month and you can see where there's a little bit of residual product clinging to those waffle pans there my goal was to use this 20 times i actually reached for it 28 times and here's what it's looking like today and as you can see, I've worn away most of that residual product on those broken pans. I didn't touch this one at all. I think that one is called Incandescent Electra. 
Is it? No. I'm not sure if this is Incandescent Electra or Euphoric Fusion. I'll pop it up on the screen when I figure it out. But I didn't reach for that one at all, the more like purpley mauve one. And I really focused on these because I wanted to use up that remaining product. And most of my looks were pulling more warm toned and just were more appropriate with the blush tone that I was trying to pan at the time. And it's times like this that I really am happy I did not throw this palette away. I still got so much amazing use on it just in what was left over in those pans. And I still have another beautiful blush in here that's different from any other shade in my collection. So just because something's broken doesn't mean you have to just chuck it in the bin. I had this completely closed and sealed when I dropped it, thankfully. It still had a lot of life left in it and I'm glad that I was able to grant it that life and it's gonna go back into my collection happily. And I would love to reach for these shades that I repressed together into a old compact. Let me grab it, I'll show it to you. I'm having so much fun doing show and tell right now. So I repressed those two shades into this Charlotte Tilbury compact. I've reused this compact a few times and here's what it looks like all pressed together. It's basically just like a peachy highlight and it's perfect for a highlight really. I love this. I think I'm going to declutter that Essence I'm Nude highlighter because this serves a very similar purpose where it just gives such a natural sheen. It's not glittery at all but it has so much more impact a nice glow on the skin than that Essence one ever did for me. I just never quite did it for me and it's just sitting there in my drawer and I could happily be using this as a nice little highlight on top of a blush. It's just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So happy I saved it, happy I brought this one in and it is gonna roll out knowing that she belongs here. And the last product that I've been working on is this one from e.l.f. This is the e.l.f. Jalapeno Palette, one of their bite-sized palettes. I brought this in last month when I drew the King of Diamonds, which was an affordable product. And this is definitely one of the most, if not the most, affordable item in my collection. I think these little bite-sized palettes go for $3.50 or $4. They're under $5 for sure, but they are very, very, very affordable. So my goal for this one is to use all the shades at least one time and to try and hit one pan in this palette. It already has a pan. I brought this into my pan those eyeshadows, I think sometime this year. So here's what it was looking like last month. I had pan on that third shade, the matte mid-tone green, I guess the lighter shade of green. And here's what the palette is looking like today. And I doubt you'll see much of a difference, but I have met a few goals on this item. I used all four of these shades one time, and now I am trying to hone in on one to hit a pan on. So I reached for this first gold shade five times. I do have this on my lid today, all over the middle part of my lid, just to add that glow of gold on top of just more of like a muted brown. So love it for that. I've been layering it a lot. I use this shade, the like shimmery green two times. I use this shade just one time and the dark green two times. So I'm kind of going in between shades of which one I want to hit pan on. This one would be easy to hit pan on. This one would also be easy to hit pan on because I would use a more detailed brush with it. And I have various strategic brushes I could reach for that would help me to get pan on this one probably like less than 10 uses. And I could use it as a liner. It'd be good for fall. So it might be that one, but it might also be this one because I'm just having so much fun layering it. And it goes so well with all the other neutral tones that I'm currently panning. It just makes it a little bit more gold and fun and special. I did create a really nice green look with this color palette. So I'll include that here. I just wanted to let this palette shine. I didn't use the gold one in that look, but I just had to get some kind of use on this palette before this update. So I was like, green it is. Okay, Saturday, not going to work. We're doing a bright green for lunch out with the girls because it was fun. So that means I have three products rolling out. The Hourglass Blush Palette is going back into my drawer. The concealer is also getting saved for a more appropriate day. Maybe in a couple months we'll reach for that one again. And the powder is going into the empties and will count towards my quarter three empties and spendies video. So check out that one. It's going to be coming to you soon. These two are staying in. I'm hoping I'll have a pan on this one for you next month. And this one will probably be with us till the end of the year. So I've got my deck of cards here. They're ready to go. Here is Marilyn, if you're not familiar. I use Marilyn Monroe cards because she is an icon. She's an icon. And I'm kind of channeling Marilyn Monroe vibes today. I have this very form-fitted, kind of like bodycon red dress on today. The union at our district was bringing new bargaining items to the table and us teachers wear red to show that we support the union. And so everyone on campus was wearing red and hence the red dress. And I threw on the red lip just for you. But Marilyn Monroe would be proud, I think. You know, I'm very much inspired by her beauty 
every day. And I love her quote, if you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. <laughs> I feel that way sometimes. So I'm gonna shuffle these cards up and make sure that I have a joker in here, just one and no more. If I draw a joker, it means that I have to work on something that I really do not want to work on or really don't want to pan. Maybe it's something that is difficult for me to use. It's something that is really sentimental and I don't want to use up. That almost never happens for me. I like using my makeup or I would keep it in for many, many, many uses or something like that. Uh, so here's my one joker. It's Marilyn Monroe's signature and I'm gonna put it into my cards there and as i shuffle here is the game board for this month so you're gonna see it first i'm not seeing it right now i haven't even looked at it in the least and i can never remember what the face prompts are the face prompts stay the same every single month and the numbered cards get shuffled ever so lovingly by emily on the 10th of every month so that we are ready for the update on the 20th okay i've shuffled it three times I'm going to cut the deck there. And these three cards on top are the cards that I'll be drawing. So here they are. Let's go. Got a 10 of spades. Ooh, a 10 of hearts. And a king of clubs. Okay, didn't I just get a king of clubs? No, I had the king of diamonds. All right, good. That means we'll get something different, a different prompt. Let me see what those prompts are. Again, I can never remember the face cards. <laughs> So the 10 of spades was the first card that says matches shirt. Aha, all this talk of red. Let's bring in some red, that's exciting. The next card was the 10 of hearts and that says wish list dupe. So I kind of have to think about what is on my wish list right now and, and what could fit that bill for my collection. And the king of clubs is a black king. So that means splurge. Ooh, great, I get to use something expensive. I can't wait to rifle through my collection and see what I come up with. I'll be right back. Hello, I'm back and I have my three items here. I had a little bit of creative ownership on one of them, so I hope you don't mind too much. So we'll start with the 10 of spades. That was the first card that I drew, which is matches shirt. So again, fire engine red. This was a pretty easy one to do. I just reached for a red bullet lipstick. This is from Pop Beauty. I got this in a boxy charm years back, so it is quite old in my collection. It is a classic blue toned red. And here's what the bullet is looking like. I've actually gotten quite a bit of use on this bullet over the years, but it's just getting to the point where, you know, it's out with the old and with the new. I think that this has lived a nice life in my collection. So I've been kind of thinking about decluttering it and replacing it with a more luxe red lip like this one I just applied from NARS during the break. So I've been kind of just wanting to treat myself a little bit in some more high-end lipsticks, especially since I love and enjoy lipsticks so much. And since I've been using so many lip products to treat myself a little bit in that way. So why not get rid of this one? I wanna get maybe 10 uses on this bullet before I declutter it. And I'm gonna get those 10 uses in this project. So that is my goal for this item. I am also painting a red lip liner right now in my regular project pan, rolling project pan. So this will pair nicely with that liner. And I don't think it'll be difficult to get those 10 uses in the next couple updates. No problems there. And then I think I will feel much better about throwing this out and just reaffirming that there are better formulas out there and better packaging. Like that's what we're paying for, right? But sometimes it really does make the experience that much more special. And I deserve to wear them, especially as a red lipstick lover. 10 of hearts is for a wish list dupe. And I had a little bit of fun thinking about this one. There aren't really a lot of makeup items on my wish list. Panning has really put me into a different mind space of just like not really caring so much about the releases. Like there's a little bit here and there that I want to explore. And I definitely like trying new products once I've used the ones I already have, but I don't want to always be consuming. And for that reason, I'm just not that tempted these days by a lot of items. So I got to thinking this might be a good opportunity to kind of dig into my samples and just see what's in there and see if that starts to inspire something in me. And in there, I found this little foot mask set that I've been holding on to for probably two or three years and it's just been taking up space and all that time and over those two or three years I've touched it and thought about it and moved it and placed it and organized it like a probably a hundred million times so I would like to use this up and then it occurred to me that I've really been wanting to get a pedicure I am due for a pedicure I haven't had one since July and I've just been waiting to find the time to go and get one but you know they're expensive last time I got a pedicure I mean I upgraded I got the nice massage but after the tip and everything I paid at least like $70 for a pedicure I mean I live in the Bay Area of California which is very expensive but still like I'm not 
trying to spend $70 once a month all the time. I'm really trying to pinch my pennies as much as I can, especially after all the spending I've been doing over the summer and catching up from the summer. Anyways, so I'm on a budget, okay? And I've really been trying to not spend money at all, really, in the month of September unless I have to. And I'm not getting a pedicure, so I'm gonna give myself a pedicure. Ah, all that to say, I'm gonna give myself a pedicure and that is my wish list, you know, to get my toes nice and pretty. So I'm gonna do this really nice four-step at-home pedicure set. I think this came in like a FabFitFun box once upon a time. I don't get FabFitFun, but I have friends that do and then they give me things, which is very nice of them. So first step is a salt soak. I really want to get one of those like foot baths that your feet fit perfectly into and they like are electric and bubble and heat and that would be so nice. Maybe I'll treat myself to one of those. I'll try and find one for free on the internet or something. So the next step is a sugar scrub. Get all that dead skin off there. And then we have the mud mask. Mm -hmm. And the last step is massage butter. And it's all pumpkin spice, so it's just perfect for the season. What better time? Oh, and I also want to use this one. This is kind of like a piggyback with that other pedicure product. It's a foot product that soothes calloused rough feet. This is from Dionys. I've never tried them before, but it's a goat milk skincare brand. I got this as a free sample. So I thought if I'm taking care of my feet, I might as well throw this little foot product in with it. And I'm hoping to have this empty by the next update or at least by December. But this is just like kind of a little bonus, just hopefully another empty I can add into this year. And this project will motivate me to use it. So that is kind of buddied up with the pedicure set. And then I reached into my nail polish collection and I've been systematically going through all of my nail polishes and marking them after I've been using them just to make sure that I'm using everything and getting rid of ones that I put on and just wear terribly or I don't like the color. I'm just trying to kind of hone down that collection as well. I decided to reach for this shade from Essie. This is like almost a tealish, foresty, greeny blue shade. The shade is called Off Tropic like off topic, but off tropic. So um, yeah, I'm not gonna swatch it because I don't wanna paint my nails right now. Well, I guess I will swatch it because I'm due for a new coat and my dirty nails. Don't even look at them, I'm sorry. The dirty life sometimes, my teacher, it comes with the territory. And this will be my fall pedicure. And Lord knows I probably won't give myself another one until the winter season because that's just how things seem to go in my life. So, okay, without giving you the middle finger, I did not intend that. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna put down my fingers. So there it is. I should have done a different finger. That was silly of me. Look, I, I just don't want you to look at that finger. The finger's dirty. <laughs> so that is the color. It's pretty. It's gonna look beautiful on the toes. It's gonna be perfect for fall. And um, let's just move on from this one because I've now been talking about this item for far too long and I'm getting off topic. I'm so chatty today. The last card was the King of Clubs and that is for a splurge item. So I decided since I rolled out a concealer, I might as well roll another one in and this is quite a splurge in my collection. This is the most expensive concealer I think I've ever purchased. This is the one from Shiseido. And again, I purchased it in the wrong shade. I need to stop doing that. I just always assume that I'm fairer than I am. And also I typically want my concealer to be like a little bit lighter than my foundation, but maybe I don't. Maybe that's just like old habits dying hard. You know, that was the trend for so long was to highlight using your concealer. And really now it's not so much. So that's something I need to remember next time I purchase concealer and make sure I get the appropriate shade for me. I'm much more a light, medium, sometimes medium. I, it's hard to find the range in between there and the undertones and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's hard to find a match. So and this one is not a good one, but I plan to make it work, maybe even by mixing it with that e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer, which has a much more appropriate shade for my skin tone. But because I spend so much money on this, I think this Concealer costs upwards of $30. It's ridiculous, and I can't believe I spent a bunch of money on it. I will never do that ever again. I don't even think it's all that great, but again, that could just be the shade talking, but I'm gonna try and get some use on this all the same. Let's go big. Let's try and do 30 uses on this concealer. That's not too big, but it's big enough where it'll make me happy that I got some good use on it, and maybe that'll change my mind, help me to appreciate it, help me to fall in love with it. It wouldn't be the first time that has happened during the course of this project. So that is all for my deck of panning update today. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment letting me know what you thought about my choices. I just appreciate you so much for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you're doing really well wherever you are in the world and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Until then, bye.